Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Pre-Market News and Views by In The Money Stocks. Today is Monday, July 2nd, 2012. What a week it was last week, and this week it's starting off very, very quiet. Looks like the futures are up. Uh, the S&P E-mini futures are up just uh, half a point at the moment, right to 1357. Again, holding steady. Normally, after a big rally like we saw this past Friday, the following trading day is just a more of a light volume sideways move for the most part. We could see a little bit of upside. I would not rule that out. But again, uh, generally, after you have a big, big move like that, as we did have on Friday, the following day, you'll get a pause day. Uh, we are also in the trading week right before the 4th of July holiday. This year, the 4th of July falls on a Wednesday. So traders have to watch for that uh, going forward. But right now, um, if we look at the markets in a whole, uh, they seem to just be holding up very, very well. The U.S. dollar index is catching a decent bid today. The dollar moves up higher. Expect the markets to come under a little bit of pressure. But um, with the trading volume trends that are in place this week, I'm not really expecting anything major unless something out of Europe really starts to come in uh, and there's some major news that moves these markets. But uh, you can see the dollar's holding up very, very well back above the 82 level. Uh, on Friday, the dollar did trade, believe it or not, as low as 81.56 on the US dollar index futures and that's the U contract so decent pop back up on the dollar today but um, really just bringing the futures back down towards the flat line no real big deal there uh, the market is still running off that euphoric euphoric high uh, I'm not sure how long this lasts but uh, while it does you know we'll we'll take advantage of it and uh, hopefully it makes for good trading but uh, the truth of the matter is that um, you know all of these all of these things seem to be temporary and uh, We'll see how much uh, the markets get out of this. I don't think Germany has changed their stance. Um, they still do not want euro bonds, and that's really what this whole thing is going to come down to eventually, who blinks and who allows uh, euro bonds to take place. But it really isn't beneficial to Germany, and that has not happened. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see how this all shakes out and plays out over the next uh, few weeks. But in any, in any case, right now we're dealing with uh, light volume, and that's what we have to watch for in this market. Let's get back to the futures chart, and you'll see futures are starting to come in a little bit more here. So you're starting to see a little bit more of a dip there in the futures. Um, I believe that um, we do have some economic data out today, uh, but I don't think it's going to be until 10 o'clock. I think we have the ISM manufacturing index for the month of June, and we'll see how the market uh, moves off that news. But uh, that news is not out till 10 o'clock, so we'll see how the market reacts then. But right now, the stronger dollar is taking down the futures just a little bit. The futures have now moved lower by about a half a point. So we'll see how it all plays out um, when we get through today. Uh, a couple of other things to go over real quick um, before we get started is to talk about um, the Asian markets. Um, last night, um, Chinese data was a little bit weaker than expected. Who cares, really? We only care about the action in the market. The Shanghai was only up one point. You would think that the Shanghai would really rally after um, the news on Friday here in the United States. I know it did rally um, on Friday night, but the U.S. markets took off and really had no reaction. Now, the Hang Seng did much better. That was up 2.19%, so almost up 2.2%. Um, that was a great move. But you didn't really see it in um, the Nikkei at all. The Nikkei was negative, um, just just slightly. Um, that, that the Sensex was was down, I, I believe, two tenths of one percent. Australia was up about nine tenths of one percent. So, you know, you didn't get huge reactions last night. The Hang Seng did have a very nice move, but um, in my opinion, Shanghai index is the most important that anyone could follow, and really not much activity there for the most part. It was up and down, um, finished off the lows, obviously, but it, it was only up one point the entire session. So, um, you know, watch these markets closely. Especially the Chinese ADRs, um, you know, they may they may have run their course already, or they may be close to it. So we'll keep it on on the radar going forward. Now let's talk about gold and silver. Uh, gold is down today by sixteen dollars. Gold had a huge move on Friday. Let's take a look at the GLD this morning ahead of the open. You're going to see GLD on Friday closed at 155.19. Today it's trading at 154.34. So gold remains very very volatile at least at the moment. If the dollar dips, expect gold to get a bounce. The dollar continues to move higher. Gold will move lower. It was just a tremendous move on gold, but I think that's all it was, just a short-term move. It may have a little bit more upside left in the cards, 
but I'm not sure it has all that much left in it. But either way, you slice it or dice it. Um, great move on Friday on gold. Gold was up over 50 points, but today it's down 16 points, so watch that dollar closely. Again, um, don't expect too much out of gold today, in my opinion. Uh, let's take a look at oil. Oil is down $1.36 uh, to $83.60. On Friday, it had just a huge move, up over 7 points. Um, today, it's given back a little bit, down $1.36. to Again, that's all about the dollar. If the dollar moves higher, oil is going to move lower. And if the dollar moves lower like it did on Friday, oil is going to surge. And that's what we're dealing with, inflation and deflation. We may as well just face it. We're trading central banks now. We're not really trading stocks or commodities any longer. Um, but oil is trading. Uh, spot light sweet crude is trading at 83.57. Let's take a look at the USO this morning. Yep, USO is trading down to the 31.36 level, closed at 31.83. So a decent little uh, tick down on oil, at least on the USO ahead of the opening bell and we'll see how it all plays out if the dollar pulls back oil will get a little bit more of a bid I don't see anything great on the charts anything terrible it kinda looks uh, pretty similar to me now there's some stocks in the news it is a Monday rather quiet and it's a holiday shortened trading week as the US markets will be closed on Wednesday but many traders have already left for the entire week so barring any real uh, geopolitical event the volume trends this week should be extremely light it's almost a good time to take a vacation, to be honest. Uh, but let's take a look at what's out there. We're going to take a look at Amlin. I believe Amlin has been bought out. Um, looks like a takeover uh, by Bristol Myers. Stock is now trading up at $30.78. If you own it, congratulations. If you don't own it, there's nothing to do. Just leave it alone. Let it play out. Let it go sideways. That's all it should do from here on in. But if you own it, congratulations. Maybe you want to lock in some gains. It's all up to you. But great move on Amlin this morning is getting taken over by, I believe, Bristol Myers. Here's another takeover out there, LNCR. This is Lincare. It's been making the headlines recently. Um, closed on Friday at 34. Today it's up at 41. This is a takeover as well. So, again, there's not a lot you can do with this. Um, I believe this one is getting taken over. Uh, it's being bought by uh, Germany's Lindy for $4.6 in cash. But there's, there's not much you could do with, with this one. Another takeover this morning is Bright Point. Ticker symbol is Sell. Okay, this stock's in the mobile area. Uh, stock is getting taken over as well. Nothing to do. Just leave it alone. If you own it down here, congratulations. It's, it's a takeover at 9 bucks or just underneath. And there's really not a lot to do. And then you have Open Table. This stock was downgraded this morning. Um, pretty good little fall. Uh, trade it down to around 43. Now I guess it's at 43.85. No volume, and this is generally a light volume name. So when you see these stocks like this, if this thing does come down and close below 42 bucks, um, there are a few levels you could look at: 39.50, uh, and then I think you really got to look at the 38 dollar level. 38 looks like a very good support level to me. That's your best bet for an intraday bounce right at $38 on open table. So if it gets there, look at that level. That's your best bounce area for today on OPEN, even though it's a light volume stock. I'm just trying to find something else that's out there that can give us some movement today. But open table looks at looks real attractive at 38 I don't know if it gets there. That's a big fall for it to get there, but that is a very, very attractive level. Keep it on your radar even over the next few days. All right, so that's pretty much it. We're going to wrap it up this morning. Um, it's going to be short and sweet this week. Uh, there's going to be no trading volume, so you want to be careful. And we'll see how what the market gives us and how it plays out. I want to wish you all a great trading day, and uh, we'll see you on the charts a little bit later. Take care, everybody.